different but together make a beautiful garden you ever been to one of those yeah i have actually my mom takes us there because it's free <laughs> ha! i told a joke <laughs> well what if i told you we are god's garden mm, keep going first corinthians chapter 3 verse 9 talks about this and i especially like the part that talks about how things get added to the garden but it is god our gardener who makes us grow Wow, that's really interesting. But what's that got to do with the circle of life? Yes, well today we are going to take a, this, uh, we are going to take a look at the circle of life through the process of growth in the garden. Get it? That's a... Sh sh what are you doing here? Let it go, let it go, son. Hey, morning everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Can we give them a round of applause? Come on, come on. All right, my bad, my bad, my bad. Okay, what I forgot to let you guys know is that we gotta do the updates first, you know, for for Pepsa. So I'll, I'll get the I'll get the boring bit out of the way. Okay, you guys relax, take a deep breath. All right. So um, while we uh, while I do this quick intro update, I'm gonna invite the deacons, our amazing deacons. Can we give them a round of applause, please? We gotta appreciate our people. And we're gonna take up our offering. Our offering today is going to our very own Pepsa ministry. And one of our amazing ministries is of course Epic and we're taking over church this morning. So as we take up our offering, just letting you know of a couple of things. We have In Connections that is coming up um, at the end of June. So this is a really great opportunity for us to um, talk about the important relationships that we have in our lives. And um, so it's on the 29th, 28th and 29th of June. Registrations are due now. So if you go into the foyer, you will find these registration forms. If you have any questions, please see Tracy. Auntie Tracy, can you please stand up so we can see you? Please, Auntie Tracy, please stand up. Thank you, Auntie Tracy. So everyone go see Auntie Tracy if you have any questions. So that's in connections coming up. We also have our winter shelter. This is a really great opportunity for us to practice what it is that we talk about when we preach from here about community. So our winter shelter is planning to open for six weeks from July the 25th to the end of August. So we're currently in the process of putting together a team of volunteers. If this is something that scares you, something that you wouldn't ordinarily do, something that as soon as I said winter shelter, you got goosebumps, then this is for you. This is the opportunity for you to grow. Please, if you have any questions, see Auntie Tracy or Uncle Carl over there. Um, but yeah, we would love to have you be a part of that. So anyway, sorry, back to it. Sorry, son. Sorry, I won't do that again. Thank you. Okay, so back to the program. Where were we again, Josh? We were... We... Uh, we were... Just about to welcome everyone. Oh yes, welcome everyone. Please open your hearts and enjoy today as we take you through the, the circle of life. <laughs> Meow. Awesome, can we give them another round of applause? 
Wow, don't you feel all welcome and warm and fuzzy inside this morning, church? Do you feel good this morning? Yes, awesome. Well, I can tell you now I've had the privilege of sitting in some of the rehearsals that have gone in to today, and you are in for a treat. It's going to be an awesome, awesome day with our kids. So I'm going to invite you to stand, and we're going to sing some songs together. We're going to praise our God this morning. We love this song here. It's called The Lion and the Lamb. We're going to lift our voices and sing together. Let's sing. He's coming on the clouds. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare His praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save, the God who comes to save, is here to set the captives free. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles, and every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains, and every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Oh, every knee will bow before the Lion. sitting at the front every week. Sound beautiful this morning, sounding beautiful. You know, um, today is Epic Church where our kids are gonna be leading here from the front and teaching us a little something. And um, you know, I love that, that God loves 
children. And he said, you know, you know, he actually wants us to have faith like a child. All of us, all of us to be children again. And, um, you know, this next song we're going to sing, Who You Say I Am, talks about um, that fact that we are all children of God. And um, sometimes we forget that a little bit when we get older. But um, I hope today that um, as our kids come up and lead, that we are reminded of that, that we have a Father that loves us so much um, because we are all children of His. So we're going to sing this song together. Our God is a God of beauty. He is a God of wonder, and He is a God of power. And today, we're going to be looking at that and how we fit in to this beautiful, powerful, wonderful plan that He has, because He is a beautiful, beautiful God. So the girls are going to lead us in this next song, our final song for this morning, and I invite you to join us and sing.
Amen. Let's sing into the one heaven. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us? Sing a church, what a wonderful name. What a wonderful name. Thank you for singing, church. You may be seated. Can you please bow your heads and close your eyes as I lead you in the word of prayer? Dear God, may you bless us all today. Help us with the things we are struggling with and surround your angels around us. As today we worship you and share your words through us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Father God, I pray that you can bless us and the offering today. I pray that those who talk will not be their words, but your words, Lord. And that the kids that are coming up here today will not be doing this just for the church, but for you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All this is, is a space. To look at it, it seems like nothing remarkable. True, except that this space could become the birth, birthplace, showcase of something far greater. All this place takes is a little bit of grace and then ha- Shh, didn't spoil it yet. <laughs> oh, right. Well, gardens don't look very pretty at the start. The soil on its own isn't exactly fine art but it is still part of a way bigger scheme. If you pay close attention, you'll see what I mean. Things that aren't finishing can sometimes make you doubt. Have you seen the baby when it first comes out? But babies and gardens look different once they're tended to way more flowers and far less goo. Well, that's why the gardener will, d wait. <laughs> this garden's a bit like a canvas before you paint it, all empty and doesn't know what it's gonna be yet. It can't control who or what it becomes. Maybe there'll be flowers, or apples, or maybe even plums. It says in Corinthians that we are God's garden, but pardon me for thinking this garden's a little boring. 
Well, that's why the gardener will do some restoring. It doesn't matter now if it's empty and bare. It's being prepared for something so great that all we really have to do is wait. Seen the masterpiece before he has even lifted a finger. His greatest joy is found in bringing beauty and life out of dust, filling what was once void and empty with fragrance, color, and light. He envisions, cultivates plants, and nature nurtures his garden with a perfect blend of patience, vision, creativity, wisdom, and kindness, constantly watching, tending, and nourishing the planted seeds as growth begins. He earnestly looks forward to seeing the fully grown flower sway in the breeze and all its glory it's being part of the process he loves the most having his steady loving hand in the life of each sending as it grows to be testament of beauty for passers-by and it is by the beauty of a flower petals or the fruit of an abundant tree that they see the true workmanship of the gardener and that fruit bears seeds which falls again into the ground for the water and sun to nourish and the circle of life continues on and on forever unfurling new layers of beauty fragrance color and light and all of course under the ever watchful ever hopeful ever loving eye of the gardener god is like a gardener he uses his hands to create beautiful things for he made you and he made me he wants to help us grow so we may show the passers by his workmanship so that they too may want to be grown by the gardener. As the gardener meets with the empty space, much work is needed to be done before any planting begins. Certain things should be planted at certain times. Whatever is planted must be planted in prepared ground. The Lord takes great care in preparing our hearts to receive the seed he plants in us. Know this for absolute certainty that the Lord will start every work in your life in the form of a seed. Matthew chapter thir 13 verse 3 through 8 tells us that sower sowed the word into a variety of ground conditions, but only the good ground yielded a crop. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. So we see that preparation is vital to producing a crop. Preparation in a garden means removing undesirable elements. Burning, plowing, and digging may be involved. All of us on this level have experienced all the, uh, these things as, as the Lord prepares certain areas of our life to receive a seed. For the Lord wants us to enjoy the fullness of his blessings, and so he prepares our heart first that we may be ready to receive what he has to give us. Allowing God to move the weeds out of our life it's, uh, is so important.
From the empty space to the gardener who takes the time to work the ground, to plant the seed, it is now time for the nurturing to begin. God the gardener works to prepare our hearts for what is yet to come in the circle of our life. He places people in our lives to help us through our seasons. Life is not easy. The Bible encourages us to lift, lift each other up and not to be weeds to each other plants. We are built for relationships and we all need connection. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6 and 7, we are told that there are those who plant and there are those who water, but God gives us the increase. God is the center of our plant, the center of the circle of life. Some of us are waterers and some of are planters. As we turn to each other, we learn and grow more together. In our Sabbath school morning classes, we learn and grow together but, uh, about God and we discover more and more of who He is. Together in groups, we share experiences of our week. We exchange stories and share ideas of how we can experience God in our own lives and with each other. The tending and nurturing stage helps the plant to know that it is not alone. In the same way as God places people around us to help us to turn to us in our journey of the circle of life, He wants us to know that we're not, we are not alone too.
This garden looks so different now. With some time and effort, love and care, this place is finally a place we can share. Before this place was empty and bare, but now we both have plenty to spare. But how do we get from all that emptiness to here? Well, we definitely needed a little help. Firstly, what was important was the ground, which sounds kind of boring, but without the ground around you're bound to hit problems pretty quickly. Right, like if the soil is wrong, it would take really long, and all the seeds that came along wouldn't work. True. But if the soil is ready to and lets the plants come through, then you get a garden? Well, not quite yet. Next, you need people willing to plant seeds to help the ground succeed. You can't grow anything if there's nothing there to start with. Whether there's a little or whether there's a lot, the ground would just rot with no seeds. That's pretty cool. Can anyone plant seeds? Yep, but that's not the only job. Do you know what comes next? Well, I guess you would need someone to water it. Mm-hmm. Without someone to water it, the seeds would just sit there and we would stare at the seeds and glare at the ground and around about nothing would happen. But with a little water, life can start to grow. A stone's throw from where we had plenty of food and sit and eat in the sun. I think you're forgetting something before this story is done. Before we finish our allegory, you're forgetting the most impor important part of the story. Oh, God, right? Is that what you mean? Even when the ground is fine, the seeds are aligned and the water is divine. The garden's lifeline will still continue to be God. With God, grow and stop, rise and fall, he makes rain or shine, and we couldn't do any of this without him. The question really though, is what do we do with the garden and all the fruit he gave us? Well, you said that at the beginning, now there's enough for us to share and to help grow new gardens. How do you think we can do that? We can find people who only have soil and share our talents and abilities and gifts. We can shift the dry concrete and plant some new seeds. We can tell them our stories, share a shovel if they need. Now that we know about gardens, we could even teach. Well, each of us can surely find something small, but this garden is pretty big after all. Thank you, thank you, Caleb. You got this, Caleb, you got this. It's all good, it's all good. They'll wait, they'll wait. Can we give Caleb a round of applause, please? Yeah. Right. Who's enjoying Epic Church so far? Yeah? I enjoy it too much. They had me in tears from the very beginning. My eyeballs are swollen. Okay. Children, stay seated because the rest of us are going to stand and we're gonna clap for you. Let's all stand and clap for our children. They did an amazing job this morning. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, thank you. You know, it's like, um, it's like those TV shows, <clears throat> The Voice, or um, perhaps you've watched America's Got Talent. And they always have, you know, the people that are going to audition. And behind the scenes is the person, the family or the friend, and they're just, you know, in tears. And they're so happy. And it's what I feel. It is what I feel. The entire time our children have been up here, that's what I feel. And I believe that in the new heaven and earth, man, it's gonna be a party because our children are gonna be leading us in worship. I believe that. Um, it's a very brave thing for our children to come up here. You won't notice, but there are some children that are going to be part of the later part of our program who only turned up this morning, but they have had the courage to come and be part still. And, and I guess the reason why I get us to stand is because it is very important that our children see and feel and hear that we appreciate them. Because when we have left, they are going to be the ones that lead. So thank you you amazing epic children thank you thank you yes let's give the round of applause okay so we've got a photo coming up <clears throat> the first thing i remember that i ever owned was this blanket this light blue blanket it was, I know, I look so grumpy. In case you're trying to figure out which one I am, I'm the one wearing the dress. <laughs> this day and age, I'll probably be the one in the middle with the shirt and the pants, but I didn't have a choice back then. 
I, the first thing I remember ever owning was a blue blanket, and it was very fluffy on the inside, rectangular shape, and the sides, the trims, were made out of silk. And I don't remember how or at what particular age I got it, but it would have been around perhaps four, uh, four and five, the age of four and five. Everywhere I went, this blanket went. When I slept, blanket slept too. I played outside, this blanket came too. When I ate or when I would have ice cream, the blanket would be a perfect cover of my clothes to catch the ice cream that would stain my clothes. And you know, this blanket, I felt like it had my back. Um, unfortunately, it was dragged around with me everywhere I went, so the light blue color slowly faded out and it started turning a bit dark and gray. But whenever I felt sad about something, just one rub of the silk edges of my blue blanket will make me feel like I was at peace. One cuddle of this blanket would make me feel like I was on top of the world, especially when I would get into trouble. It would provide me with warmth when I was cold and when I was lonely, it always kept me company. My parents realized that attempting to have a discussion with me about letting go of the blanket was not on the table. And if you know me, there's a particular look that I give that even without words, it will communicate to you very clearly, do not do that. And that's the look that I had whenever I felt like my parents were, you know, Philomena, hey, come on, it's time to, and that, just like that one look, no, they would back off. What eventually happened was we went to visit one of our relatives, and somewhere in between the time where we finished off, you know, having our time together, we said goodbye, we packed up, we got in the car, somewhere in between there, I must have been distracted because when we got home, I realized that my blanket and I had been separated. And there was a lot of uh, screaming, um, a lot of crying, um, because I realized that my blanket wasn't with me. To this day, you know, actually to this day, 25 years later, I still remember, I still feel in a part of me that was really connected to that blanket. Really, I really remember that every time someone would try to take the blanket, when my parents would try to take it to wash it, I, man, that blanket was the center of my life. What was life without it? You ask me, I don't even wanna dare think about it because it was my everything. Everywhere I went, my blanket was there. And now, my family gonna do me like that. Separated me and my blanket. Well, turns out, I survived. Uh, I lived, you know, I cried, cried for a few months, but I lived, and um, to this day, that was the center of my life today. What's the center of my life now? 30 years old, not Carl, who is in the photo. <laughs> Carl is a great person, not Carl. My relationship with God, an eternal one, one that my parents cannot separate, even if they tried. One that no one else can, even if I tried, I couldn't. And the realization of this relationship and deciding to take a step into the circle of this relationship has and will always be the best decision I have ever made and will make in my life, my relationship with God. Amen, amen. God the gardener. Let me bring you to focus on the relationship between the gardener and the garden. Also, do you like our garden over here? Isn't it a great? Um, yes, okay. Thank you, five people. The gardener. In Genesis chapter one, in the passion of pas passage of creation, we are introduced to the gardener, the creator, nurturer of all life, when all was formless and empty, he was already there and ready to work his hands into this empty space and create. See, this is what I love about God, that I don't need to be anything else other than who I am when it comes to God. He sees me as I really am. My good days, 
when I'm smiling, my big Fijian smile, and also my bad days. Believe it or not, I don't wear a smile 24 seven. I can't, I've tried, it doesn't work. He's always ready and always willing to work his hands into the empty space of my life and create. And not only is he the first, he's the best, and he is an eternal gardener, the garden. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, talks about a garden, God's garden. And in the King James Version of the Bible, we are called God's husbandry. But the, the word has a variety of meanings, such as farm or field. The Amplified Version of the Bible also uses the word garden, meaning that we are like a field. We are God's garden. And he has been a gardener from the beginning of time, looking after all creatures and cultivating the conditions in which life can flourish. That's what gardeners do with their garden. And that is exactly what God does with us. The relationship, the gardener, our creator, and the garden, his creation. The difference this relationship makes to our lives is lost versus found. Disconnection versus connection. Brokenness versus restoration. Separation versus reconciliation. I love my children. Thank goodness, right? Because I'm their mother. And Every single day, every single day, I don't know how many times in a day and they probably get sick of it, I tell them that they are a blessing to my life more than they will ever know. Now, I have preached before and I didn't have any tissues when I became emotional and so I'm just going to take a slight pause and Brittany, may I have some tissues please? Because using my t-shirt does not work. So I tell my kids more, more and more every day that they are a blessing to my life more than they will ever know. And I have always said to them, thank you, Brittany. I, will, I have always said to them, mommy cannot give you everything. But what I will do to the very best of my ability for as long as I have breath in my lungs is that I will love, love, and love you even more after that. And no matter what comes and goes. No matter what comes or goes, what we lose and what we gain, we have each other. And our relationship, my relationship with my children is far more important than good grades far more important than materialistic things, far more important than the hopes and the dreams that I have for my children. And even if they grow up to become something that, well, I don't necessarily agree with, I will choose to love, love, and then love them even more after that. They are a part of me. How much more, how much more so does our creator love? How much more so does our creator love us? When we deflect, when we get distracted, when we forget, when we choose to ignore, he stands there and he chooses to love. He chooses to love, love, and then love us some more. Thank you, Sunny and Pei. Can we give my kids a round of applause? Thank you. Just so you know, that was not planned. I'm gonna to talk to them after the service about interrupting me. <laughs> How much more so 
do we take advantage of the way that our Creator loves us? Here's the twist. We don't have a life. We are life. Genesis chapter two, verse seven says, then the, Lord, then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. We are life. The circle of life is God. Hold on. We all have this, by the way, so, you know, don't be ashamed. I'm not, because I'm, I'm really not. Okay. The circle of life is God. God is wholesome, eternal, and never-ending. A German philosopher and theologian in the 1400s said, God is a circle whose center is everywhere, whose circumference is nowhere. No boundaries for our God, and I love that. God, the gardener is at the center of every stage, every part of the circle of life because he is the circle of life. And take that as an encouragement today, wherever you are in the circle, the empty space, messiness and chaos, he is there. The gardener, your realization of who he is, he is there. Breaking of the ground where he is cultivating our lives, he is there. The tending to where we are watered and nurtured, he is there. Growth, the period of time where we, which we need to develop, he is there. And the fruits, the living out of our relationship with the gardener that of which we are known by. Galatians chapter 5, 22 to 23 tells us about these fruits. Do we know them? What's one of them? Love. What's the other one? Joy, peace, patience. All the children are saying it and all the adults are trying to remember what the Bible verse says. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Amen. Thank you. See, that's what they're learning in Epic Sabbath School. See, natural fruits have seeds in them. And I believe that in God's garden, as we produce fruits, we have the opportunity to plant seeds in others. Seeds of our fruits. Seeds of love. Seeds of joy, peace, and patience. Seeds of kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The Bible says that some of us are waterers and some of us are planters, but ultimately it is only God the gardener who gives the increase. And the more that we understand that we have the opportunity to plant seeds into other people's lives, the less we become like weeds that eat away at the plant and don't help it grow, don't help each other grow. I have experienced these seeds planted in my life, and now I have the blessing of doing the same with our Epic children and their families. Epic, that photo was taken when Epic was first launched on the 4th of March in 2017. Do I look like I need more tissues? I probably do, yes, all right, thank you. Sorry, everyone. Oh. How do I look? Am I all right? Okay, all right. A real friend would tell you if you've got something in your nose. I'm just saying. So if you've been sitting here this whole time with something, I will, we need to talk after this. Okay. Epic was launched on the 4th of March in 2017. And at that time, I was only volunteering in one of our Epic environments, a tree house room. And now, three years later, I have the privilege of overseeing um, all of the environments um, and now employed as the Epic Children's Pastor. And uh, yeah, I didn't see that coming, but uh, clearly God did. And, and I am incredibly grateful. So, be encouraged this morning, knowing that wherever you are in the circle of life, 
Be encouraged to know that he is with you. The gardener is with you. You, you beautiful garden you. The gardener is at the center of every stage of the circle of life because he is the circle of life. It's the circle of life and it moves us all through despair and hope, through faith and love till we find our place on the path unwinding. It is the circle, the circle of life.
don't think they quite heard you. Can we give them another round of applause? <laughs> Circle of life. This is our epic family. This is our epic kids. Let's close us off with a word of prayer. Please stay because they're gonna do their item one more time for you all. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Let's pray, guys. Dear God, thank you for who you are. Thank you for the encouragement to know that wherever we are in the circle, we are okay because you are the circle of life. Help us to lift each other up and encourage each other, whether that's watering or planting. We want to help each other grow. Thank you for our epic children and how beautiful they are. Bless them all. Bless us, Lord. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, and all of God's children said, Amen. Let's play that again.